So the next section for southbounders is from Kataya to Kerry Kerry. In total, you'll be walking about 72.4 miles, with, including the Broadwood alternate, which I will go into detail later. But when you leave the town of Kataya, pack out anywhere from three to five days of food. You can probably get away with a small resupply in the town of Broadwood, but if you want to carry the food for the entire section, pack out anywhere from three to five. So when you leave the town of Kataya, you start off on a road walk that has a very small shoulder, but if you time it correctly in the morning or later in the day, you probably won't have to deal with too much traffic. But then you turn off onto a gravel road and it becomes way more peaceful. Just a wide, wide path in my opinion. And as you approach the convention center, I use that term loosely, as you approach the community center of the town of Takahu, um, and I use the t word town loosely as well, as you approach there, you are walking more peaceful roads. And as you see here, this is the town hall. And it has a nice little overhang, so if any weather's moving in, you can kind of hang out there, grab some lunch. And this is the alternate I mentioned, the Broadwood alternate due to forest closure. So for the year of 2022-2023, that closure was in effect. So you would have to go into the woods a little bit and then junction off. As you can see, a lot of hikers probably shoot for that place for lunchtime. So back to the road we went and just walked up into the mountains. And this was our first kind of incline in a few days. I think actually since the beginning of the trail. And it was just really nice to feel the legs pumping again on just an inclined surface. Um, again, flat miles are sometimes easy miles. Caveat, not in New Zealand necessarily, besides beach. But flat miles are sometimes easier miles, but you're using the same repetitive muscle group over and over again, and it can be a little rougher. So as you go along, leave the Takui Community Center Town Hall, you start this long climb on two tracks, so it's not too bad. And mostly gravel road. You pass by a campground called Saddle Campground. We did not pop in to see if they had water there, but there are a lot of natural water sources in this area, as you can see. So you can easily pop a filter bottle in there and fill up some water and drink that good nectar. So once we pass the campground or campsite, you hit this junction. And this junction here is where the original TA went off to the left there. But with the Broadwood alternate that you had to do for the closure, we went down this two track to the right. And as you go down this two track, it kind of starts to get a little overgrown. Again, it's in a fairly recent alternate, fairly, fairly recent forest closure. So there's a couple pockets of overgrown dense vegetation, but all in all, it's not too bad. So here is our first actual creek crossing of the trail, which was mm, probably, probably something, um, a little bit of foreshadowing there. <laughs> there's going to be a lot of water on the TA. We did it in a very wet year. Rain was abundant, but overall you're going to have a lot of water crossings. So after you cross the creek, you go back to two tracks stepping, gravel road stepping, and just walk these long winding roads. Very peaceful. So after that's done, you get into the town of Broadwood, and there are two options here. So the first option is you can camp at this free camp spot that is very overgrown, or you can walk to this corner store where I'm showing you right here and you can pay five dollars per person to camp in kind of their rugby baseball field type thing um, as you see there's a kind of pocket for a lot of TAers to go back there and especially with this year I'm assuming they got 20 tents a night or something in that ballpark so it's a very nice setup you can also resupply at that store that's the Broadwood store I wanted to mention um, might be a little more expensive than resupplying and, from, and carrying from Kataya to Kerry Kerry but if you so desire, you can do that. So day two, we ended up doing 23 miles. It's vast majority road walk, if not all. And as you can see, you leave the town of Broadwood and you just start the road. So the road, I would carry the water from Broadwood until the Mangamooka Dairy, which is about mm, 18 miles away, somewhere in that ballpark, maybe a little bit less. You can get water along this route but as you see with that cattle sign there is a lot of livestock and I personally wouldn't want to be drinking that so you could easily just carry it for the entire road it does get hot especially if you have blue skies like we did so be prepared for a little bit of sun baking and just act accordingly bring some sunscreen get ready for a long road walk there are key pockets along this road that the shoulder gets quite tight 
but overall it's fairly easy to manage. Again, just stay aware and stay on your R's and W's or P's and Q's, I'm sorry. <laughs> Either one. That is not water, that is old coffee, so there's a faucet near the Mangamooka Dairy that you can access if you don't want to pay for water. It's a nice little hose spigot type thing. So when you leave the Mangamooka Dairy where you can get some hot food, a little extra snackage, you continue your two-track road stepping. You will see some turkeys, as you can see there. Have fun with the turkeys. If you do a call and response with them, they will respond to the noise that you emit. So it's a nice little change of pace if you've been road walking all day. Also say hi to the donkey. I don't know if the donkey will say hi back, but it might. And you do a gradual climb out of the Mangamooka Dairy area. And this sign, that flood warning sign, be very cognizant about that. So if this area that I just showed you is flooded, you will have to turn back because the section of forest that you will be going into has a very, very deep river and that will be very flooded. So be prepared for that. So we camped at Blackbridge camp spot um, right to the left of where we're doing this boot wash. And the morning of the third day, this day we did 31.9 miles. I kept this long section of video in here to show you um, how intense the calorie dieback is and how much preemptive measures New Zealand is trying to put in place to stop the spread of it. Um, it can get in the mud in your shoes. I feel like I read an article somewhere that it's like a very small speck of mud can like contaminate an entire forest. So be very, very, very careful when washing your shoes, scrubbing your shoes. Um, do everything you can to prevent this and prevent more forest closures. So once you do the shoe wash, you drop down a little bit of muddy track into this kind of creek bed, which you will follow for the next two three miles and along there your feet are going to get wet there's no keeping the dry feet um, as you can see sometimes you can walk along the bank but most of the time you're going to be wading right in that water and this inlet will ultimately lead to a river and the river crossing some people went straight across it which you will have to swim but luckily there's a piece of track that you can go and it will bring you only waist high again i kept this piece of video long here because it shows you the micro ups and downs of New Zealand, which are sometimes the hardest spots. It's very hard to capture it on film, how steep those sections are, but you sometimes have to sit, kind of wiggle your way around to properly get down safely. So once you cross the river, you start along this track that follows along the river, um, and it's very bouncy. Again, very hard to capture with film, but it shows you kind of the steep ups and downs that really chew into your pace if you're trying to hold a quick pace. Um, I would not think most people would average above two and a half miles per hour on a good day through this stuff. It's very muddy, very steep. Um, somebody out there probably can, but just as a loose average. So watch out for those mud pockets. They will steal your stuff. And once you get through some of that mud, you start following the river again before a uh, longer up. And I wanted to point this out to these DOC signs. So DOC is Department of Con Conservation in New Zealand, similar to the U.S. Forest Service. And those signs that they put there have all these time splits, and they're in the middle of these sections, and they'll tell you how far away something is. B, again, use your best judgment on these time splits. We found that usually we could shave off some time from them. Um, don't get too worried, but everybody hikes their own pace, so sometimes they might be accurate, sometimes they might not, but... Again, take those time slits with a grain of salt. Usually you can go a little bit quicker. So after we got through those many, many steps a few scenes ago, very chonky climb up to the top. The track became outstanding, very well maintained. Um, not any more mud because we climbed out of that riverbed. And then we ended up joining this two track to ultimately get to the Piketty Recreation Area. And it was two track stepping. Not much to say about that. Pretty easy overall. And it was just nice to be able to accurately hold a pace and continue our forward momentum. Beautiful trees along the way. It's just New Zealand has some gorgeous forests, so soak it in. So this is a Piketty Recreation Area. The, the shed or the shack or the why am I not getting the word? <laughs> the hut behind Magpie can sleep, I think, up to 20 people. You have to text in advance or reserve in advance to be able to stay in there. If not, you can pitch a tent outside. There's a lot of tent areas out there. So once you leave that area, you start another longer road walk. And this road walk, again for the year 2022-23, um, was only supposed to be a certain amount of miles. 
but unfortunately there was a closure that cut you kind of straight across this farmer's field and he closed it because of bulls in the farm pasture. So the miles weren't adding up. You have to do this kind of three quarters of a square to get back to the point. Um, it makes your mileage a little bit longer. So be cognizant of that. I think it ends up being like two or three miles longer than the actual maps because the maps are pulling the old data. So once you finish that road walk, you connect back into official trail. Watch out. Cows may be beautiful, but if you're walking muddy patches around cows, you just really pray and hope that ratio is mostly mud. Um, the sinking factor is quite the feeling when you're going through that. So once you pop through there, you can kind of see in the distance, not yet fully carry carry, but you can kind of get a feel for where you're dropping into. And this portion is beautiful. Once you start dropping into this next kind of valley, beautiful forests, easy walking. You end up walking along this kind of creek bed um, for quite a while after you pop out of this forest here and people definitely maintain this area very well as you can see and you walk around here here you go the creek bed here again very straightforward and beautiful bridges kind of does a longer loop around the town of carry 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 but absolutely immaculate trail you can hold a pace on that if you so desire and yeah we just kept walking. We were nearing the end of our day. The mileage got a little higher than we anticipated. But overall, this day was pretty good. The forest part will be the longest. But after the forest, you can pretty much cruise. You get to see a wonderful waterfall. And I think it's called Rainbow Falls, if I'm not mistaken. So get your pictures, get your phone out, get your camera out, take some yeah, beautiful pictures, video. And you drop down to the base of it as well, so you can see that. And it is just one of the first waterfalls you get to see. So soak it in. New Zealand will have way more in your future. If you look at this trail too, it's a bike kind of trail. So once you're getting close to the town of Kerry Kerry, you can really hold that pace and get to step in. And Kerry Kerry has full amenities. It's a full town. You can get McDonald's. You can get food if you don't get there before it closes. Um, resupply and get ready for the next section. So. It was a really beautiful one. First flavor of New Zealand.